I'm joined by Stephanie Hare, Senior Analyst at Oxford Analytica. Stephanie, thanks for being on the programme. Uh, there is a lot of pressure on European leaders now to up the ante in terms of sanctions against Russia. What do you think might happen as far as they're concerned? Well, we saw last week President Obama saying that this was a wake-up call for Europe and Hillary Clinton saying that Europe really needed to take a lead on this. I'm afraid that the United States is going to be disappointed. What we can expect to see this week is unity from EU member states on things like getting access for the investigators to the crash site and hopefully getting the bodies repatriated in time for, for the victims to be brought back to their families for mourning to begin. But anything else in terms of ending this conflict is going to be a very long and protracted struggle. We are not going to see intense economic sanctions like the United States imposed last week from Europe because the member states have very different long-term strategic relations with Russia. That's the difficulty, isn't it? We're talking about 28 different countries with different relationships with Russia and different sort of reliance in terms of their exports and what they import from Russia. Exactly. I mean, Germany is much more pro-Russia than I think most people know, particularly here in the United Kingdom. So they have a very strong economic tie with them, but also very strong um, energy vulnerability. France, of course, has its, its um, defense relationship with Russia and is going to be furnishing a Mistral uh, warship by October to Russia. And that's, that's not being talked about a lot publicly, but it's definitely being talked about in Brussels. That's not even on the negotiating table at the moment. France is determined to deliver that boat. They're training Russian sailors right now. So that's happening. Obviously, the country that most has the moral high ground and, and real influence in the discussions, of course, will be the Netherlands, which lost 192 of its citizens in this crash. It will be very interesting to see what position they take and what they want on it, but I think we can assume it's safe to say that what they're really going to push for is the repatriation of the bodies and access to the site for a proper investigation to take place. Many are arguing, though, that this event is a game-changer when it comes to the, the dispute over eastern Ukraine. And if further sanctions were to be imposed, how far do you think Europe is likely to go? I think Europe will take an incremental approach. I hesitate to use the phrase muddle through, which is what we've seen them do for things like the Euro crisis. But they will certainly not go nuclear at the first stage. They will do everything in stages and they will want to see at each stage the response of the Russian President Vladimir Putin who already this morning has made a statement on his website suggesting that there might be some overtures on his part to try to get access to the site for the investigators. I think he is now the one that's under pressure and that's the game changer is what is Europe and the United States, what are they able to do to force Russia to act, to hold Russia accountable for its influence? in this conflict in eastern Ukraine. Okay, Stephanie Hare uh, from Oxford Analytica. We appreciate your time and your analysis on what's going on at the moment. So that's how...